name's Sarah Price, and welcome to, to Poudre School District's Living History. Um, I attend Olander Elementary and, and am today's host with a visit from Ray Cruz, um, Mary Johnson, and Gary Johnson, who's to learn more about the people whom schools have been named after. Um, Ray Cruz, Cruz was named after Ray Cruz, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Mary and her husband were named, Johnson na was named after them, and this is Gary Johnson, Mary's son. <laughs> um, I'll begin with asking you guys a bit about yourselves, and let's start with Ray. Anything about your family work? How much do you want to know about myself? <laughs> <laughs> as much as there is, that's well, important. <laughs> I go back to where I was raised on a farm near Greedy, Colorado with eight older brothers and sisters. I was the youngest and so I was supposed to be spoiled. I hope <laughs> I'm not. I grew up, went to a little country school. I had six in my class. When I got in high school, I attended Greedy High School and participated in football and wrestling. And I went to University of Northern Colorado and uh, received a degree there. And about three weeks after I graduated, they were going to draft me, so I enlisted in the Air Force. And the war started right after that. And I spent five years in the Air Force. When I came out, I uh, came to Colorado, Fort Collins. My wife was teaching in a high school, and I had anticipated going to California, but my wife and the superintendent of school, Dave Lesher, called me in and said he had three jobs and he offered me any of them. So I took the one I wanted, which was junior high, and I was there five years, and then I was recalled to the military again for two years. And then I came back and uh, as principal and assistant principal at the old Lincoln Junior High. And then I both, who was superintendent then, drafted me as the district athletic director, a job that I kept for 15 years until I retired in 77. And uh, that's about my life up to now. Okay. Mary, anything you want to say? I was uh, born in Hayes, Kansas. and. Um, I went, uh, after, you know, 12 years in school, I went to Kansas University and got a degree in bachelor's in music education and taught two years in western Kansas and went back to Lawrence for a master's degree and then taught a year um, in uh, Borger, Texas, where my folks had moved. And um, in the middle of the year, Curtis Johnson, whom I had been uh, going with for some time, uh, felt he was going to be enlisted in the Army, so we were married at Christmas time. Well, he flunked the test, which was nice, <laughs> so we went back to Lawrence, to, uh, Lawrence Kansas, where he taught uh, instrumental music in junior high. And in that marriage, we had three children, one little girl who passed away when she was nine years old of a brain tumor, and the boys two came two and a half years later, and I had twins, Gary and Larry Johnson. Larry is head of the commercial department in um, the courthouse, and Gary teaches art at Bowles. And um, we had uh, 12 years of hair raising experience with twin boys, <laughs> and then uh, they all both went to <coughs> college at um, Greeley and Larry in business and Gary in art, and he teaches art at Bolt. Now I'll let him go on with the rest of the story. I've lived happily ever after in Fort <laughs> Collins, and I think it's the greatest place in the world to live. Is there anything you want to say about your father or your life? Or your life? <laughs> well, I was born in Fort Collins, uh, and I've lived here most of my life. I went to school at UNC, as Mom said, and I lived in Aspen for four years, uh, teaching and doing artwork in the mountains, and then I moved back to Fort Collins, and I've been teaching here for 29 years. Okay. Um, 
back to you guys. Um, how did you guys feel when the school was named after you? Well, I was very surprised because the one thing, I didn't even know my name had been submitted. My daughter, Dr. Karen Shirey, uh, uh, got all the recommendations from people and sent it in. And uh, uh, somebody called me up one night and said, hey, do you know you have a school named after you? And I said, oh, is that right? And I felt very humble because uh, I, did, I wasn't expecting it. But it's a great honor, and uh, I really enjoy uh, going out to the school. When I called my two sisters that live in California, they said, well, we thought that you had to be dead before they named the school after you. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm still alive. <laughs> um. How about you, Mary? Oh, I was excited about it and very honored. Uh, of course, Curtis had been teaching here before I did. We were married, but then I had uh, twin sons, you know, that I had to uh, chase after. And we <laughs> lived on Laporte Avenue Annex. If you know Laporte School, mm -hmm. there's a building at the back. Well, we couldn't find any place to live, so David Lesher said we could um, uh, kind of change a, a very large room. And we had five rooms, you know, that we had uh, fixed in there. And the side bottoms, both of those people taught school here too, eventually. And they were on the other side. So we uh, started out with uh, life in the school from the very beginning in Fort Collins. But, um, well, then what else was I, you did you ask? That was uh, it. That was it. I, I guess I'm just sorry. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> How did you figure out the school was named after you? Oh, I was thrilled. Just, you just can't imagine what an honor it is and that you would never dream of such a wonderful thing happening to you. But my husband was instrumental music and I was in vocal. So we were both teaching music in some form uh, for the life of our teaching experiences. How often do you go back to the school and visit? Well, I'll tell you what. I haven't been back as much as I should. First of all, Gary's children and uh, his twin brother is Larry Johnson. They both had children in school and I was running around from several schools, you know, keeping up with my grandchildren. <laughs> and, uh, but I have been out there and I th I'm very, very proud of the work they're doing out there and uh, the principals have been just great and teachers. I've enjoyed it very much. Um, how have children changed from when you were teaching to now, when you go back to and visit the school? Well, when I first started, the teacher, the children sat in the chairs a little better. better. They didn't wiggle quite as much, and uh, they didn't, uh, they weren't as world widely, uh, you know, experienced in vocabulary as well as uh, the public. You know, the, it's mm -hmm. a different world. It's just we were kind of calm and quiet and. And, um, oh, the casualties were at a minimum, where now I think uh, you can expect one about every day in one form or other. But uh, it's, you learn to grow to it and, and take care of it one way or another. Have you noticed any differences in the children? Yes, a lot of changes, and I'm sure I'm not, I'm again a few of them. <laughs> I remember uh, when I was principal, I. I was a strong disciplinarian, as Gary can at attest to, <laughs> and uh, I just couldn't see 2% uh, of the students interrupting a classroom. And so the ones that didn't uh, behave themselves, about the third time they were talked to the teacher, the counselor, and then to me, and then their parents. The next time, it was a little rough on them. Now, if I do that now, they'd fire me before 10 o'clock. <laughs> but you know something? People like Gary and some of those kids like that are the ones that I see more often and hear from them. Uh, and another difference is dress. At the time, the, uh, the girls were not allowed to wear pants. And the boys' uh, hair was, was cut. And if it wasn't cut, well, I had a friend that was a barber down here. He got the hair cut, and he looked. One time, 
I sent a boy down to get a haircut down there, and he came back, and uh, Mr. Riddle was in shop class, and he walked in the shop class, and Mr. Riddle sent him to the office. He said he wasn't a member of the Lincoln Junior High School. He didn't recognize him. <laughs> but other than that, I think uh, there's a lot to say for the new generation. They, they're smarter. They have the, the computers to work with. And they have money, they have jobs, and they're just a lot smarter, I think, than we were when we were children. Did you give more homework then? Do you think they give now or less? Well, I taught physical education for five years, and uh, there wasn't much homework there, but we did our homework after school on the football field and the basketball court and so forth. How about you? Any singing? <laughs> well, there wasn't much homework. We, we uh, performed occasionally, which we'd have extra r rehearsals. But, um, oh, yes, we had some, you know, uh, music uh, tests along the way, but it wasn't, it was mostly singing. And we did quite a bit of that in uh, assemblies and various places. I think in our fields, uh, there isn't much work that needs to be taken home except uh, maybe practice after school or rehearsal and um, I don't hand out homework unless my students are behind and when I was in school I didn't do homework so I don't have <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a basis to figure out if I should hand it out or not. Um, what are your memories of Fort Collins? Well when I moved there in 46 we had no there were no buses. The city ended at uh, Stewart Street, the river on the east, the river on the north, and the city park on the west. I think, if I remember, there were about 11,000 people in Fort Collins at the time. And uh, things have really changed. It's probably, I know it's over 100,000 now. And we didn't have the traffic. Uh, I think we had one stoplight in town, <laughs> and that was so the streetcars could all three pass each other down on the mountain in college. But the changes, uh, other than hasn't changed much, it's still a great town to live in. I wouldn't live any other place for the world. Mayor, I memories? wouldn't either. I, when I met Curtis, he came from Fort Collins. He lived here, my husband. Uh, when we got married, he said, we're going back to God's country. And that was Fort Collins, Colorado. And fortunately, there was an opening in instrumental music when we moved here, and he walked right into the job. Well, after I had uh, the twins, and they were in, L in kindergarten, I started teaching. And I started in junior high, vocal music in junior high. And then um, I uh, moved to elementary. And, and finished out my retirement years in elementary school. Do you have any certain the, memories? Probably the largest change uh, in Fort Collins since I was a little boy was, was the population, like Ray and Mom were saying, that, that uh, Fort Collins was a very well-kept secret for many, many years. And it was a nice small town, and now it is um, uh, very large. So. We have to deal with the traffic and, and all the new people uh, that uh, have moved into our town. What schools did you teach in, Ms. Johnson? I taught in um, O'Day, and then um, I taught vocal music, so I had two schools. What was the other one? Ma um, O'Day and um, one of the... Well, I went to the hills on one, one week. Mountain of school. Mountain school one day. And then um, uh, the Port Avenue School. Okay. And um, we just had music t twice a week in the elementary schools at that time. And then the teachers took on. I think it probably is about the same way this time. A specialist goes in. Uh, just for, uh, you know, not too often, but but it was a good life and a good place to live. Now, Curtis had lived here in Fort Collins. Did I say He this? was born here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when I met him at KU, he said, I'm going back to God's country. <laughs> and so here we come, fly back to Fort Collins, and I'll agree all the way. 
I wouldn't want to live any place else. <laughs> what schools did you teach at? Well, I, I was lucky enough to stay at the old Lincoln Junior High. I started uh, teaching physical education there and uh, coaching all the sports for five years. And then, I, as I said, I went back in the military for three years. Then I came back. And I took over assistant principal for five years, and then I was principal there for three years. So I just taught in one school, the old Lincoln Junior High, that's uh, now the Lincoln, Lincoln Center. Center. And the only, the only building standing there is the gymnasium, which is on the west side where they have the banquets, and the auditorium, which is, uh, they have some small uh, places and the stages there where they put on the programs. No, they don't either. They do the programs up at the Lincoln Center. But yeah. the auditorium is still there and they can have small shows there. Yeah, everything else is new. They yeah, everything the else building. is new. Really? I, and I taught at Aspen High School for four years, uh, Beatty Elementary School for two years, and I've been at um, uh, Bolts for 23 years. You're getting old, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> but um, Ray and Mom and Dad have been in Fort Collins their whole lives, and they've uh, produced programs that are still uh, in the business today. So uh, they deserve the recognition of having a, a uh, facility, teaching facility named after them. It's their names will be on those buildings until the building is gone. So they, they're very worthy of the mm -hmm. honor that they were bestowed. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but I think when, you, when you're coaching or when you're, uh, and at one time I was a recreation director for uh, Fort Collins for five years at the same time I was principal. At recreation, now you know, they have uh, the cemeteries and the golf courses and all these programs that go on. And uh, I had both those programs, and when they changed the city manager's job down there, he wanted a full-time recreation director that would have all these activities that they have now. And they offered me a job, but uh, I wouldn't have left those junior high kids if they'd double my salary. <laughs> <laughs> I just loved to work, loved to go to school and meet all the kids. And I was the last one out of the building. Maybe Coach Kennard was after I was, but I was the first one there and the first one away, and I greeted the first student in school. And that was sometime 7 o'clock. So I think probably perseverance and uh, long hours uh, and trying to do a good job probably had a lot to do with it. But I was still surprised when the honor was bestowed upon me. What do you guys do in your spare time, not on school? Well, when I first retired, I, I bought a uh, fifth wheel trailer and my wife and I uh, toured all over the United States. We were gone every winter. And then she passed away and uh, uh, of course we did make four trips to Europe and four trips to Hawaii when she was living. But since that time, I've, oh, well, I've, took up golfing about three years ago, and uh, I'm not saying I'm a golfer, but I like, <laughs> I like to golf, and I meet a lot of my friends. But uh, I used to fish and hunt. I kind of gave that up. So I worked with the Lions Club uh, quite a bit. I was president of the Lions Club at one time, and uh, I'm still working in the Lions Club, but it doesn't take much to keep somebody my age busy. <laughs> What do you do with your Well, I uh, seem to be busy at home, take care of my big boys. Uh, we have another one that's, uh, what did I tell about, Larry, that works in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And the grandchildren, now the grandchildren take place. They're, they're very important to me. And um, I just, I keep busy just going places and with my church and the school. I try to, you know, keep in touch with the schools. And um, so I'm busy. I couldn't be <laughs> sitting on my seat all day. <laughs> what do you do with your spare time? 
Um, my wife and I, Diane, have built uh, four log homes in the last four years, and um, I stay busy with that and um, try to relax a little also. So that's what I've been doing. What about your father? How did he spend his time? Oh, he was, uh, he liked to fish and camp. And uh, um, in his later years, he'd go to, out to coffee in the mornings and just hang out with his old buddies and drink coffee and talk. So that was a good way for the, to pass the time away. Well, uh, was that brought up that he was an instrumental? Yeah, he is an instrumental teacher, yeah. Yeah, We've he retired from Fort Collins High. He started teaching here before I did. Yeah. And so uh, we, we were in the school system and, and busy with school activities, mainly, mm -hmm. on, on both levels of age. Do you have any grandchildren? And I have five granddaughters, no grandsons. <laughs> Gary oh, had twin uh, girls. Lacey and Darcy. Lacey and Darcy. They and go to Fort Collins High School. And old, an older daughter, Jessica, Jessica. She just got married. She graduated from Fort Collins High School. And uh, Larry had, um, he had twin girls, but one. Oh, no, no which he one? had uh, an older daughter, Angie, and um, their youngest daughter, Stacy, is at Rocky Mountain High School. Where did your five granddaughters, oh, though? Do you have any grandchildren? No, I, I have what I call grand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they're two cocker spaniels, but they both left this world last year. So I just have one daughter and a uh, son-in-law, son of course. But uh, it's uh, just one Small of those family, things. Huh? Just one of those things that... Uh, and Ray's daughter and uh, Larry and I ran around when we were just teensy little kids. We've known each other our whole lives. Yeah. Did you graduate the same year? Yeah. You did, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yeah. Where did your, um, where did they go to school? Well, Karen went to University of Northern Colorado one year to major in foreign language. And uh, while she was there, she took a home ec course. And of course, she had been sewing since she was young. and. The uh, teacher over there said, you know, you ought to go into home economics instead of foreign language. So she transferred to Colorado State University and got her uh, uh, degree there and a master's and a doctorate at uh, Colorado State University. And she's in Fort Collins now. I mean, she's in Thornton High School now in, near Denver. And she taught home ec down there for a few years. And then she went into counseling now. She's a head counselor. But uh, she, believe it or not, she can retire in about two years, and I think she will. Do any of your grandchildren or children seem interested in teaching? Um, at this point, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what direction they're going to go. Um, my oldest daughter uh, works in a hair salon. She's um, uh, works doing hair, and then the twins are still in high school. Anything you want to say? Because we're almost out of time. No, I think uh, it's been very enjoyable, and you've done a great job. Yeah. It's been very fun, good. and I've it's enjoyed it, too. Yeah. I very know nice. you were nervous when you started, but... We like the te teaching profession. That's all I've ever known. My family was full of teachers. Well, thank nice. you guys for coming, and hope to see you soon. Thank, thank you very thanks. much. Thank you.